Hello and welcome to The Secret Show. I'm Patricia Steer. This is episode number 227. And as always, Mark Sargent joins me. Hello, Mark. Hello, Patricia. <sighs> I'm happy to be here today. We've got uh, beverages and we encourage our live audience or even the audience watching it at a later time to get a frosty beverage or a hot beverage. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. It doesn't have to be frosty. Yeah, it can, uh, it can be room temperature. People really it can be boiling hot as long as you don't spill it on your lap, because yeah. that would necessitate a a physical and financial and fashion emergency all in one. Uh, hello to the live chat. If you would give the video a thumbs up, even if you don't even know if you're going to like it or not, have faith and uh, share it on your social media. I've got a T-shirt to share. I've got an alcoholic drink to make before your very eyes. And I want to talk about a whole bunch of different things with you, Mark. One of those is Inar Kusk. Another one is Alex Jones being sued for defamation about his rant. Uh, excuse me, uh, defamation because the parents of Candy Hook children uh, are up in arms. I'm calling it Candy Hook so we don't get a strike on the channel. Um, D. Marble. Now, he did a wonderful rant on Syria, which is why I misspoke and said the word rant a moment ago. And uh, this is all linked in the description box of this channel. Also, Mike Marshallak, a guy I interviewed in December of 2017 about Antarctica, and he wanted to do some exploration. He's got it together, and he's going to be doing something. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about Vince White, the comic book guy. Remember this guy? I he do had, remember this guy. He did a Kickstarter, and he had people fund him. I funded him. Many others did. And he was going to put out a card game and a comic book, and then it kind of disappeared off the map, so to speak, right. off the radar. And uh, we have an update courtesy of the Kickstarter today I'm going to share with you. And we're going to talk about Flat Earth and the Illuminati and YouTube and anything else our little hearts desire. And of course, anything the live chat wants to talk about too. What have you got on the menu? I am going to talk about a mistake I made with the BuzzFeed guy identity. Mm. I will probably talk about the Newsweek article briefly about how conspiracies are bad for you. And uh, what else? Going to show off. I should probably show off my my uh, my grandfather's T-shirt that was made for him. Oh, how nice! So we should we should probably get that one out of the way because I I actually until you said that you're going to show off a T-shirt, I actually forgot it was okay. You show your shirt. Okay, so my cousins came up here recently before my grandfather passed away, and one of them was kind of following my work. She lives in California, and she's not a flat earther yet, but she was so motivated by my thoughts and convictions that she actually came up with a shirt specifically for my grandfather, Spence Purvis, and it says, you'll get this. I am Spence Purvis, 100. Too far? Too high? Too low? I, I couldn't, I didn't talk because um, you were muffled because you were holding that over the microphone, but Spencer oh. Purvis was your grandfather's name and he was 100 years old. Right, right. So this was a t-shirt that was hanging by his bed uh, during the last days. Hmm. Yeah. Sad, go. but also wonderful. He lived to 100 and died with his family all around. I right. mean, you know, that's yeah. not half bad. Well, I'm going to show a t-shirt too, and it's not one with a sad note. It's a happy note. And I certainly hope Nathan Oakley is watching now. And if he isn't, somebody better message him right now, because I just received in the mail all the way from wherever it comes from, maybe from the UK, I'm not sure. But the Flat Earth Debates show is one that Nathan Oakley hosts and has been doing quite a while, quite successful on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel. And I ordered and received this. And I'm going to talk and hopefully not be muffled while I show it. It's going to be muffled a little bit. Flat Earth debate. I like it. There it is. There it is. And in those little photographs under the word debate, so many different flat earthers. I see Anthony Riley. I see, well, I see me in there too. Everyone's there. Not everyone, but a whole bunch of different people are there. So the Flat Earth debate shirt. This is a women's size small in a lovely yellow color. And the next time I do a panel show and have Nathan Oakley on, I'm going to wear this. So Nathan, hey, uh, if you want a shirt like this or any of the other ones that uh, Nathan Oakley is offering, and he's doing this to help support his family. I mean, isn't this cool? And also it supports Flat Earth and his channel. Um, you can check the uh, Nathan Oakley 1980 channel and the information is in his description box. Okay, so we've shown two shirts. Yep. 
you've got a drink and I've got to make one. What do you have? I am doing my standard junior mint with a twist. And that is uh, one part peppermint schnapps, one part creme de menthe, and two parts Kahlua. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks a little green. Looks it like matches my ring, actually. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Uh, that ring, by the way, given to Patricia by the uh, Duke of Ireland, I believe. It's, no, actually, it was willed to me. Uh, it was willed to me by the estate of Greta Garbo, actually. And I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, let me make my drink, but I want to show this off. Last time we drank on a show, I don't know how long ago that was. I think it was like two weeks ago. Yeah, something like that. I mentioned <laughs> that I ordered a glass stopper for an alcohol bottle, and it arrived. Unicorn. Pretty, right? Mm. And I'm going to use this in my Stoli vodka bottle if it fits. So I have this lovely glass, which is also pearlized like my unicorn, and my Stoli vodka. I'm not advertising or getting any money from any of these things, darn it all. It's vegan. That's my one mention of veganism in the show. Yeah, alcohol can be vegan or not. Fish's swim bladders are used to filter wine, beer, and spirits. You just have to check. There is a website called Barnivar. B-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-E, and it will list what's vegan and what's not if you're somebody who's interested in that. And if you're not, drink whatever you want. I don't care. Um, so you can still be an alcoholic and be vegan. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> well, the reason I'm vegan is for the animals. Uh, good health, I already had that, but perhaps by being vegan, I'm maintaining good health. I do not know. There's no way to be able to test that without having two of me. And who knows? I mean, and Lord knows no one wants that got my Lakewood uh, Harvest Red, I don't know, it's some kind of cranberry and grape blend of, of juices. So wouldn't it be funny if the top were loose and like this juice started flying all over? I would amusing. laugh. I know you, so would I, unless it went into the computer itself and then we short circuited the entire program. Yep. So I'm doing a lot more juice than vodka. So anybody out there who's going to chide to me later, let's see. A lot of juice there, but I pre-spiked the juice with the vodka. I was about to say, it's a low <laughs> camera. You can't prove anything really there. I know, I know. Remember, kids, drink responsibly. Yeah, and don't drink and do a show. I mean, drive. Um, this bottle is so cold because I keep it in the freezer, and this is the same bottle I've used for quite some time, meaning it doesn't get that well used. Oh, that's cold. So right. you know, in, in Russia, you don't have to keep in freezer. You just put it outside. No, In fact, our daughter <laughs> knows about yeah. this. Just put put it next to chair. <laughs> she is Croatian girl. She's Croatian girl. And she just put it in the outside or in her bedroom where it's very cold. <laughs> oh, wait. Let's try the little... Uh, what? Let's not use this thing. It's ugly. Let's use this beautiful thing. Hey. Why a unicorn? I don't know. Unicorns are... Um, they're, they don't exist. They're mythical and they're one of a kind. I've seen your place though. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of rainbows and unicorns. No, in no, it. it's not that vibe. It's more just uniqueness and it's pretty. Well then. All right. There you go. I saw it and fell in love with it and had to have it. All right. Let me mix my beverage. You think this is going to be any good? I can't see where you can go wrong, really. Vodka yeah. and fruit juice. It's been done. Yeah, and it's been done uh, on this show as well. Successfully on all sorts of different things. I think the last time I had it, I used some kind of a grapefruit juice or something along those lines. Oh, heck. I've done vodka and tang before. Okay, now that's wrong and immoral and <laughs> nasty. I do have a cocktail napkin of the show. But it's orange-ish. Yeah, kind of. The astronauts loved it. Step aside, coffee. This is a job for alcohol. Wow. And I have a toast, speaking of Greta Garbo. Give me a whiskey, ginger ale on the side, and don't be stingy, baby. That's what she said? Yeah. It's her first take in Anna Christie, a movie that came out in 1930. And I really like Greta Garbo. And uh, it was her first talkie, the first time anybody heard her voice, Swedish. And of course, unless you read those fan movie magazines back in the 20s and 30s, you wouldn't know what nationality she was or what she'd sound like. And some of the stars who were in the silent films didn't make the transition over to the talkies, the kind of movies with sound that we have now, because yeah. they had horrible sounding accents or voices. But she made the cut. And here's to Greta Garbo and anybody else. Cheers. Cheers to Flat Earth. 
Long live flat earth. Oh, how could that be strong? I didn't put hardly any vodka in it. That's because you're a lightweight. I am. <laughs> both blood alcohol wise and physically. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I had a friend who used to call me Bucko Five. I didn't even understand what he meant. Bucko Five. Oh, you know, if you were, yeah, if you went back a little older, I'd call you like Double Lot Five. But Bucko Five, that means you weigh 105 pounds. Right. Bucko Five. Kind of weird. Anyway, there is an actual alcoholic drink. I don't think it's got vodka in it called the Greta Garbo. It's something you can order in a, in a bar. So, all right, enough about drinking and non flat earth topics. Let's get into it. Okay. What should we start with? Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with Dean Marble. Okay. He came up with a video yesterday, which was April 17th, 2018. And I linked it in the description box of this video and it talks about Syria. Now, I'm no political expert, never said I was. And um, Dean Marble isn't either. But we pay attention to some of the mainstream news because we, all of us, um, you almost can't help it. I mean, you see the videos uh, th that come up on as suggested when you're looking on YouTube, or maybe you've got a, a, a mail server like Yahoo and it comes up or on your Facebook or somewhere you see these things or someone's got a TV on or you still watch TV, who knows? Mm -hmm. And you see the whole thing with Assad. And, you know, the, the way the mainstream is playing it and the way that Trump is playing it, um, Assad is a bad man, and the people there in his country of Syria want him out, and he's tried to poison them with gas twice, once last year at this very same time, and then this year. Now, the time last year was found out to be basically a hoax, and this year as well, they found that he really didn't do it, but yet that didn't stop Trump from saying, oh my gosh, he's poisoning his own people and then go in, shoot some bombs, supposedly where they make the gas or something like that. Now, what De Marble was pointing out is, you know, pretty much what makes us the policemen of the world. And everyone's been saying that for a long time. But he had some extra good points that he mentioned. Why is it uh, our, we get up in arms and morally outraged about the fact that Assad is poisoning his own people when we are killing our own people at abortion clinics with fluoride, with chemtrails, with GMOs, and the list goes on and on. It's utterly ridiculous. And it was an incredible rant. He's very well spoken. And I listened to it and I just felt like giving him a standing ovation. And since I couldn't, I figured I'd, you know, tip my cap <laughs> to him and just say that, you know, he did a he did a really good rant and he spoke from the heart and he really was voicing my opinion and the opinion of many other people as well. So cool. That's awesome. And what do you got? What do I got? What do you uh, got? Where, where do you want me to go with this? I, I just said that so that I could drink. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to segue over to something really quick because I, I have to do a quick correction uh, because Michelle the uh lovely flat earther from northern california mexica Me Mesh 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 whatever doesn't really matter uh she she was in contact with the gentleman from buzzfeed who interviewed us down at the raleigh conference mm -hmm. and she was going to do a hit piece and you guys have probably heard me say recently that the guy when you type in flat earth right now that the guy that comes up number one top of the list is this gentleman, a, a short haired white guy with thick uh, black rimmed glasses and what looks to be like a fake mustache. I certainly hope it's a fake mustache. And I could have sworn it was the same guy. Stashes and beards are really hot right now among the younger set. Yeah. You put you put fake glasses and a and a mustache on anybody, they're gonna look. You know, again, you he's he's got a similar build and type. It's a very generic, you know, white guy, short haired brunette. Anyway, I thought he. I thought it was the same guy. It turns out you're it's one not. of those that think all white guys look the same, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I every time I get in the mirror and I start shaving, I think average white male. That's, mm. that's what I. That's what I see. So Some would say that's what I say as well. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Oh, so yeah. the the guy that interviewed us down there, his name is actually Christian Russell, R O S S E L, and you can look him up and click on images. Apparently, this is not the guy. It is not the same guy. This is they they both work for BuzzFeed. They look similar, not the same guy. And I looked at the pictures close up, and this isn't one of those Dallas Goldbug things where it's like, oh no, it's because I thought it was that guy who was making fun of us later. No, it turns out 
different guy that's working for BuzzFeed, in this case, BuzzFeed Blue, who just happened to make a series of videos against Flat Earth or parodies, and it's not. So if you guys see him, he is not the same guy from the, from the conference. That's the guy who interviewed you and I, is this the same one you're speaking of? Yes. Yes, that's who I thought. Boy, we yeah. did a really, really long interview. And Wait, what? no, 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 not, not the guy from not HBO. Okay, that's HP. Okay. No, no, this is a guy. In fact, I don't think you ever talked to this guy. He was more, he was he was doing it in the hallway and he was okay. just grabbing people. In right. fact, he used Michelle for his thumbnail. You can look up BuzzFeed from the conference Ooh, and he used Michelle. Michelle. You remember that, that picture of her kind of grimacing at the camera? That was Christian Russell. And this guy is not him. So okay. just to let you know, the guy, I, I know I've been saying is like, oh, I know it's trivial in some, but I, I got to get it right because Michelle called me out last night and we even had a bet on air and I, I lost. So Did you have to pay or anything? I do. I'm not going to say what it is, uh, but I have to mail it to her. So, I was going to ask you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was going to be something inappropriate, but I lost. So <laughs> now it's something appropriate, which yeah. is fine. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. But 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 she was she was right. She was actually communicating. You know, she's been contacting him, and it's like ah crap. So, I, I, but I I didn't I didn't believe it until I actually saw his picture. It's like yeah, they're close, but they're not that close. He he Got definitely it. has different ears, a different nose, and I'm dying to meet this other guy though. You know, see what he looks like with his glasses off. Anyway, that's that's it. Well, I want to go say hello to the live chat, but I do want to mention that I did a show with Mike Williams, the Sage of Quay Radio Hour, and it's basically all about Paul McCartney and was he replaced. We did the show live on my channel. It was a great show, mm -hmm. and it's the last show that I did, and it was fine when we were doing it live, but then when it went from the Google Hangout, like we're doing live right now if you're watching live, it went to YouTube. And it cut off the first like 35 minutes of it. So for anybody out there who didn't see it live, they click play on the show and they just, it's just a, some words up on a screen and there's no real reason why it's there. The person viewing or listening won't know who's talking or what. And, you know, I was so disappointed because it was such a great show, such a great guest, such a great topic. But a day or two later, boom, the whole thing is up on YouTube. I have no idea what magic occurred, but thank you, YouTube, Google, or I don't know who. So it's up. If you missed out on watching it live and you had a complaint because you couldn't watch the whole thing because it was missing part, it's all back again. So that's that. Into the live chat. Hello to the Aussie drama who says, yep, I noticed that. Uh, Rudy Marley Askit says, Debbie Harry's younger sister. Me. Oh, okay. There's Martin Leakey who says, hello, P. Uh, Karja is here. Ginger Sugarbush is here. Libra 61, ex-heliocentric, who's putting some emojis of flaming potatoes. Um, whale oil beef, hooked, um, <laughs> says average is the middle, Mark. The middle 99.9% because .9 you said average white male. I don't know. What I mean, it's a cliche term. I've heard it ever since I was I was young. Um, Christopher was saying Paul is dead. Um, Ron Hagberg is here, who says that was a great show. All around flat is here too. Uh, Mr. Drobot is saying, have you checked out or spoken with Brian Austin Lambert? His recent series about plasma and this existential plane is phenomenal. Hey, Mr. Drobot, nice to see you here. No, I haven't, but I I will check into that. Very cool, huh? Uh, Paul Hogstein says, nice hat. Uh, Zulu One is here. Zane is here. Flat Earth Life is here, who says, love all my brothers and sisters. Hello, Joss. Uber, Flat Earth. Uh, Karen B is here. And Clouds Behind the Sun and Moon here. And F.E. Viking. And uh, da, da, da. I don't want to mention anyone twice, although I always do because there's so much I get lost in it all. Jay Kraft here. Uh, flat Earth Crush, Flat Accord Music, All Around Flat, who says Paul's not dead. Uh, Sage Seals is here. And now I'm going to go a little bit further toward the top with Bob from Glowbusters and Flat Magic, who says, I want to show my shirt too. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? Alex Aquarius is here. Alex, hello. Um, what else is going on? Knowledge Scavenger Paula is here. And Conan68 is here. And Unsilent J as well. 
Sophie Stein's daughter, and um, Cami is here. And I hope I've mentioned everybody. If not, it doesn't matter because, you know, I'm saying hi in my own way, and I appreciate you being here. Please give the video a thumbs up. Share it if you want, and I'll go back in the live chat later. Hey, Chef Trotz donated uh, $5 Canadian who says, love your show. Tell Mark I said thank you for last night from Montreal. By the way, my name is Luigi. Keep up the good work. So what is he oh, thanking you for last night? That was Or is him. that something we don't want to talk about? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm a little a little embarrassed to say. <laughs> no, he called into the show last night on Strange World. Oh, really cool, really cool. Um, Mr. Matty Moses just joined us too, and so did Mark Ofsky. And Soundly's Banana Cam is here, so we know some trolling is going to happen. And I'm going to butcher the name because it's Latin and... Recipes finem. I know everyone who knows Latin is saying groan. <sighs> Somebody sent me the phonetic pronunciation of that, and I read it, and then I don't know, summarily forgot it. So sorry. Recipe finem. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I don't know. Um. Hmm. I still drink merlots. What do you guys drink? Uh, we <laughs> we had almost a little bit of. Oh my gosh. We have to go to the Hot Docs documentary in Toronto coming up at the end of the month, and we've got nowhere to stay drama that went right. on. Right. That yeah, was what? really weird because we were we were literally talking, and then all yeah, of a sudden- Yeah, we were talking off air on Skype, but with cameras kind of like this. And right. you tell the story, and I'll drink. Yeah, we, we Patricia and I were Skyping, and all of a sudden, we both get messages in our email box saying that our Airbnb had been canceled. Your money has been refunded. Your but money no has been letter. refunded. It's like, <laughs> like <what>? why? <laughs> uh, we're leaving a week from Sunday, so we got to do something. So we scrambled around, and and you wrote her the the person that had it, and it turns out this is this is actually quite common in in the Airbnb world, which is people are trying to get in the whole. If you guys don't know what an Airbnb cra the, the craze is about, it's kind of like Uber but for homes. I've not stayed in an Airbnb, which I know is just somebody's home. It's like not something special, but I've not used that service until this time. This is the first for me. Yeah, yeah. And it's people have been it's it's one of those interesting things where you can rent out your home or apartment for a night. The problem is, is there's an old rule which has been in the HOA world forever. I know because I was remember homeowners I was on the, association. Homeowners so, association. Yeah. Sorry, I was on the board for years and years, seventeen years. And one of the rules is you can't do short term rentals. But up until now, it hasn't been a problem. Meaning, you, how in the world are you going to advertise your home as a hotel for one night? There was never any app for that. Craigslist. Your, yeah, Craigslist. <laughs> you know. That was about as close as you can get. But there were rules, you know, so you couldn't do, you couldn't rent your place out for three weeks to family or something like that, or it had to be, it had to be long term. If you're that, renting out your place to family, you've got a problem. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you're, let's say you're going to be gone, you know, like obscure fan, ooh, it doesn't really matter. Let's I say see. friends, okay. people at your office, it was like, hey, I'm going to be out of town if anyone wants to rent my place. But it, th this has not been a problem until recently. And then Airbnbs came out. And, you know, one stop shopping where this big app take care, takes care of it all. You can just put your place on there. And so people were doing this without even checking with their HOAs like this woman here. Mm. And so she was renting out, renting it out. Then all of a sudden somebody figured it's like, hey, you can't do that. It's like, what, really? I can't. And that was it. It was shut down immediately. And so that's the one of the drawbacks of Airbnbs is that they can cancel on you. Right. Whereas a hotel Generally, Most likely uh, won't unless the place burns yeah. down or something. Yeah. Um, so, so we had to rebook with another place, and it's okay with the one we got. It's even closer to the hot dogs thing. On I the, know the indoor swimming pool is smaller, and you know the the on staff masseuse is <laughs> like. Anyway, it, we only get one instead of two. I know we have to share them. Come on, it's silly. Yeah. So no, no, it's it'll be fun. But in fact, it's only going to be a, a half a block away from the theater. It's that's closer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah. very nice where we're going to stay. So yeah. anyway, but we were worried. There was a brief moment of panic when we thought, wow, hot dogs is a big thing. It's been going on for 25 years. And obviously, when any town gets a big event that they have, 
uh, come to their town, it's something that sells out the hotels and, and right. of course then the Airbnbs. And we were like thinking, oh my gosh. And so we were checking all of these places and it was like, nope, not available. Nope, not available. Nope. And we we're like, wow, we might have to pitch a tent. The, but we found The first it. time I had heard about an Airbnb was when I stayed with the film team when we yes. were down in Salem, Oregon. For the and exactly for that reason. They said the town of Salem, you're not going to be able to, to get a room. So we got an Airbnb up in Newburgh, which was, I don't know, 10, 15 miles north of Salem and that's where we stayed but yeah it was and in fact it was that lady's first time they rented out the whole house three bedroom house uh, it was her first time and they, generally they give you, you know, it's kind of like a cross between a uh, bed and breakfast and a hotel you you still get a bottle of wine they always put one of those on the counter for really? you oh yeah yeah so they want drunk people staying in there well, yeah, drunk people give better reviews right yeah. true or they throw up on the carpet and set the place on fire. It's well, they don't give you like a whole case of wine. <laughs> for some but, people, one bottle would be enough. But it's a, and it, sorry, we, we should probably review real quick for those people who don't know what we're talking about. Because oh my been, gosh, yeah, what we've been talking about it for I don't know weeks now. And then we're boring you with it. Is that the first United States documentary, which was shot by Daniel Clark and team, is going to be premiering at the Hot Docs Film Festival in Toronto. A uh, week from Sunday, so no, a week from whatever day is the 29th. We'll just say the 29th. And we are flying up to view it. We're going to get a private screening with the film team. That the sounds day. posh. It won't be. <laughs> it won't be. It'll be basically cheese whiz and some yeah. crackers and I don't know, seven up or seven up and 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 vodka. You have in, to sit on a camping chair if that. No. Yeah, exactly. With, with no, they're probably staying with nice plastic plastic cups airbnb themselves but whatever i don't think it's gonna be nice i don't no? i think ours would probably be better than theirs they uh, well they're on a budget you know film team struggling to to make it in hollywood so we're going to be seeing that we're going to see a private screening the day before and then we are going to be seeing it in the theater at 2 p.m on tuesday so we go see it uh, with the private screening, you know, yep. when we're in the Airbnb, just us and the filmmakers. And if right. it turns out to be great, when we go to the actual premiere or the actual showing of it in the real theater with real, like, regular people, non-flat earthers watching it, we'll go there with one of two moods. <laughs> one yeah. is, we'll be like the unknown comic, if anybody can remember that. We, they had This guy had a, a paper grocery sack over his head with, like, eyes cut out, and he'd wow, come up on stage great. not showing his identity. That's from the gong show in the, in the 70s, guys. Right. Um, or we'll go just normal and happy and smiling. We'll, we'll wait and see. I'm oh, no. Ask. If I love it, every time I see me or you on screen, I'm going to grab a flashlight and go, woohoo, <laughs> in the theater. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be the eyes and ears to let the other people in the documentary who aren't going, like uh, Jaron yeah. and Bob and oh, Chris, Chris Pontius, Chris Pontius shot and with uh, the LA meetup, the many, Pasadena meetup. Many people who were at the uh, the meetup in Raleigh, I mean, the um, oh, yeah, yes. convention, it was conference, excuse me, in uh, North Carolina, Raleigh in November. Um, so we'll be letting you know via text and messaging. It turned out good or grown tear cry yeah, face we're going to be doing basically a probably the most non-objective movie review in the history of movie reviews mm -hmm. because because actors rarely will post their own pick they're not even allowed to do their own movie reviews on on uh youtube for whatever you know we don't see so in our case because we're in it we're gonna have an opinion as regular people who are in a documentary who just so happen to be flat earthers as opposed to Hollywood actors, sure. it's really different because we're not used to anybody looking at us, you know? I mean, yeah, YouTube or whatever, but we're not used to people who aren't into the same thing that we're into staring at us on a screen and making judgments about our intellect, our, you know, oh, I'm, I may have drawn about the shape of the earth. I may have an aneurysm when I'm watching this because I'm going to be, you know, me, I, you, of course, always look so wonderful on camera. I am going to be sitting there going, oh, my God, please help. I, all I, I hope, hope is I, I'm just hoping to represent the community. That's as best exactly I it. it. That's it. Regardless it, of how I look and everyone truth, looks bad a lot of the time, especially when they're just chilling out in their own home. Truth, that's truth not the told, point. Truth what? be told, I am resigned to this one simple fact. 
Yes. It doesn't matter if I love it or hate it as long as it generates buzz. Buzz and interest. And That's interest the reason the we did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if I mean, literally, if, if it was split right down the middle where half the people loved it and half the people thought it was the most insane thing ever, it would be fantastic. As long as there's nobody on the fence and said, yeah, I could take it or leave it. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. And honestly, the, from the comments we've seen on YouTube and the videos people have made and all the debates, that's probably what's going to happen. Right, is right. People are just going to. Yeah, I mean, we don't it. expect the audience to become flat earthers by watching this. It's not no. a teaching tool about flat earth. It's about the story of the people, some of them anyway, a handful of people yeah. behind the flat earth, what they're like, what they do on a daily basis. And, you know, them mixing and mingling among each other. That's really and, all it is. So and coming from the perspective of people who are not flat earthers. We still don't know. And again, Daniel, I think, sneaks a peek at this show from time to time. I don't know if he watches it live, but we don't know if they talk to anybody outside the Flat Earth community. Maybe they they're... did. Maybe they talked to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't know. I mean, they, we, we have no word on the thing. And maybe that's a good thing because we would just be badgering them constantly. It's like, what did they say? How, you know, how did it go? But I'm excited. I'm, still I'm excited too. And I'm also like looking forward to getting it over with. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm excited to see if I really am rooting for the team, reg regardless if I if I, I like know. it or not. Daniel and I, Carolyn are really nice people. I don't think they've done flat earthers wrong. They're not flat earthers, so I'm not expecting them to make a documentary saying flat earth is true. Um, but I'm hoping that it's a fair representation of everybody that uh, things aren't cut out of context. But you know what? If that even happens, that's life. That's happened with any press we do. Period. Well, their cut is going to be like every there's a reason why director's cuts are out there. They shot literally weeks of footage and they're only going to use 90 something minutes of it. So, you know, yeah, I mean, we... you and I could only perhaps be on the screen for five minutes. It's possible. No, probably not five. But at the same time, we'll, we'll see. As I'm, long I'm as a... that five minutes has us representing Flat Earth well. I'm down with it. The key here is that it is distributed. Right. And the thing is, is that it's not for money. We signed immediately that we would receive no profits from this, no matter what happens with it. We right. did that willingly um, and would do it again in a heartbeat because yeah. that's not why we did it. We did it because it was a cool opportunity to uh, do something that might get out there to people who've never heard about Flat well, Earth. And that end, let's face it, would this thing have even really been made? Hadn't we done that? You know, because they the whole point was, you know, they these guys were, you know, a, an up and coming little team. And to get this thing made, they need to have it as as under budget as possible. And we helped to make that happen. So again, I'm rooting for them. Hope a distributor picks it up. I I kind of hope it's Netflix because Netflix gonna, will be there. Well, Netflix is the main sponsor of this thing. So and for good reason nowadays there Netflix, as you know, is buying everything under the sun. And in fact, this year, if I didn't already tell you, they are going to be more motivated to buy than ever, because up until now, Netflix hasn't had no competition. But in the coming months and maybe even before the year's out, they are going to have major competition because Disney, the 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 joggernaut that will not stop, is going to be creating their own Disney flicks the direct competition and you're saying well they don't have enough to do that yet you know it's like well they, they bought the rights to star wars and they bought the entire marvel universe and as of next month pro provided congress approves it they are going to be buying 20th century fox hmm. the entire thing which means everything uh, everything under the fox banner including every movie and every franchise that fox owns you do that you now have enough content that all you have to do is create a net netflix backbone and Voila, you've got a whole nother streaming avenue. So anyway, the point is Netflix now, they're like under the, they're on a time crunch. It's like, we've got to buy as much content as humanly possible before Disney does. Remember back in the day of supermodels in the 80s, for those of us who are old enough, we may remember this. There was one named Linda Evangelista and mm -hmm. an, another one named Christy Terlington. They were very gorgeous, if you like that style of thin, tall woman. But anyway, considered gorgeous on magazine covers. One of them said, I think it was Linda Evangelista, myself and Christy, don't get out of bed for less than $10,000 a day. Just wow. if, if we said something like that to filmmakers, obviously we never would because. Well, no, I mean, there know, are, there are projects, not famous people, but I cannot tell you, you, you can read about it in all that, you know, histories of Hollywood, how many projects have been killed because, because people demand 
financial yeah, yeah normally it's actors sometimes it's studios you know and it's like no i'm not doing your project unless i get x yeah i don't get out of bed for x number of dollars so like project dead and end of story well that's a bargaining thing that those people they risk you know when they do that and we didn't really have anything to lose because our no, main goal it, why, was why not take get it out chance. get flat earth out there yeah get flat earth out there you know if pay it Plus forward it was fun it and was plus, fun. It was a lot of fun. And we shot, I wanted to do it. We I hell I was with the team for one, two, one, two, Seattle, Salem, Pasadena, Houston, and Raleigh. I was with them for five different locations. I mean wow. um, that's we amazing mean. considering I and I it, it just blew by. So, you know, over the course of a year. It was and fun. I got a good feeling about it. I think the footage they shot and given that Flat Earth, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, that Flat Earth is just molten hot right now. Flat that, Earth, so hot right now. It's so, again, <laughs> if anyone wants to loop that, go ahead and send it to me and put <laughs> a picture over it that you want, uh, including Patricia's. Um, we've got 196 people viewing now, and I appreciate everyone being here. I'm going to go in the live chat and see what people are doing. What, what are people talking about? What's really happening on Flat Earth now? Anybody... Uh, Anybody fighting? <laughs> no. Nope. Anyone blowing up a post office yet? No. <laughs> uh, people are talking about Q right now. Uh, so oh, right. That video that yes. um, the Q dropped the whole flat earth thing in there. Why wouldn't they? In fact, you, you probably heard me talk about this on while you're reading the comments. Mm. You probably heard me talk about this on the show last night, where if you go into YouTube and you type in flat earth and you set the filter to one month, look at all the big channels that have chimed in on flat earth since that remember that statistics video that came out saying that millennials the whole 18 to 24 crowd is just going you know that they they calmly and without really much fanfare have you know it's like yeah the globe yeah not really buying it anymore to the tune where fox news came out and did their story which was fantastic on on the greg gutfeld show i loved it now when it comes to q i've not been following along that closely it's not my bag Sometimes I think Q's actually a real insider. Other times I think Trump is actually Q. And then other times I think the whole Q thing's just made up as a distraction. I don't know what to think. As long as it generates interest in the conspiracy that's world. That's what you say about everything. <laughs> well, it's true. It it's like true. That. I don't I for me, look, <laughs> Flat Earth is my breakfast. So if if Q I don't care what name they go by, as long as the uh it it is a uh, a group that polarizes the part of the conspiracy world and they mention us. Great. Fantastic. Do I think it's going to be a flash in the pan? Probably. But mm. it's, it generates headlines. Again, the, the 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 Mad Mike thing. You know, Mad Mike's not a flat earther. Not really. You know, he's more of a he, rocket man stunt he's man. He's an guy. opportunist. And, you an know, fine. Look, look for funding for his rocket. But we slap a flat earth sticker on that rocket. Oh, my Lord. We had three waves of media attention. You couldn't put a price tag on the amount of media we generate from that. Three mm. times. Three different headlines we got off of that. Right. Best best money ever spent. Go, yeah. Hats off to uh, the Penguin Squad yeah, for organizing exactly. that whole thing. It was fantastic. Uh, I want to mention that Candy, I Spy NASA Lies is in our chat. And also, um, mm -mm, that just went by too fast for me to even. Uh, Sage Seals. And uh, somebody I wanted to say hi to who I hadn't seen here before. Flat Earth Witch Bella is here joining us in our live chat. So hello to all that have just joined. I appreciate you being here. Um, we have a trolling comment from a guy named Anik Boy. And he says, WTF? Mark ain't dead yet? Weird. <laughs> Mark ain't dead yet? I haven't even gotten a threatening phone call. We did get that one. Uh, that does it. Does it count? The guy from Europe that said he was going to stab us in our necks with his twenty-four centimeter knife. Ye well, and apologize for hitting the glass. <laughs> and we thought he was doing crack, and but he was doing meth. Yeah, he had to correct himself. I mean, how many how many people that threaten you write back apologies. twice? Twice. Several apologies. Yeah, several apologies. <laughs> he, apolog he apologized once, then we read his apology letter, and then he corrected his apology letter. Yeah, crazy. Because that's what you want to do. It's like, no, 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 man. I wasn't doing illegal crack. I was doing about six days of meth. 
That's awesome. Isn't it weird that somebody who would do any math at all is also listening to flat earth videos? That should not get out to the general public because they'll say that's what they all do. Does, does meth make you violent? Does meth make you want to stab flat earth? It makes you want to clean, I think, with a yeah. toothbrush on your hands and knees, every little crack on the floor. And I don't know that from personal experience, by the way, of course, but that's what I've heard. It's also a fetish. I think there's some websites on that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it is. On your hands and knees, cleaning with a toothbrush. Yeah, but that's wearing like six inch black pumps and some that's kind of, you know, pleather garter belt or something. Wow, really? I'm a weak man. Don't or don't throw those images into my head. Yeah, thanks. A hello to Delta Nine, uh, who said uh, SpaceX just landed. Yay! They're so awesome, huh? So I guess SpaceX is at at it again, up to their old tricks. Paul Hoekstra says, "Damn, I hate to clean." Well, here's what you do: just get some meth. <laughs> You'll be fine. Your house will be clean overnight, and your life will be destroyed. <sighs> but it was. But the point is, is that flat earthers we have yet to have a violent incident. Three years. Mm -hmm. Nobody's done anything horrible. We thought we, we thought well, we had a close call with the that. People who've done things horrible. Well, they're more psychological, though. Yeah. Well, you you know what I mean. No, I mean nobody's done anything in the name of flat Earth. Nobody's mm. nobody's run into a crowded building with a with a suitcase bomb, and and like that boat that had Jaron's name on it. The whole up in Canada, oh, that boat that. that boat didn't even catch fire. Everybody was, just, was saying that that was the first thing that would be the start of flat earth, earth is being blamed for some kind of terrorism. Oh, we have not been pinned for anything. Jaren's boat, says Ginger Sugarbush. Those who've been in flat earth for quite a while, just the words, Jaren's boat. And Jaren's a whole, boat. whole story unfolds. If you're old enough to remember that, if you've been deep enough to <laughs> if you're old that. Enough. That's what flat earth is like. It reminds me of you know things in 2015 or early 2016. I feel like that's back when we were teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Again, three. Uh, so much has happened in three years. So, so much. But also, Wizla we have says, "Don't jinx it, Mark." Oh, no, we also haven't had anything, but uh, we haven't had trolls do anything either. You know what I mean? We, you well, know, tro trolls. I mean, troll. the, the, mostly because look, you don't. Even the trolls have to admit, you don't hate the messenger. You hate the message. You hate the idea. And it's like, what are you going to do? The, good luck killing the idea of flat earth there's nothing you can do there and as this thing has gotten bigger and spread out i mean we've lost trolls because these are the same trolls that have posted videos saying you know flat earth is dead r.i.p please closed right at the end of 2015 they were saying this what do you say when abc runs the story or hbo runs the story right. or bbc or good morning britain or all these you know, they just you say keep... how you like us now <laughs> right it's like uh hey troll i'd like to see you on that show and yeah, it's like, exactly. no, they're laughing at you. It's like, yeah, some are, but some aren't. Right, exactly. They la You laugh first, and then you buckle down, do some research, and then you don't laugh so much anymore. No, no. I mean, the ABC story, as much as I hate to say it because it's got my freaking face on there, is a very objective story. And that's kind of what I want to see the documentary be, is be objective. And I think it will be. I think so, too. So it's, It cannot, people, and I know, look, the Flat Earth community is going to be they're going to be biased, but you got to remember that the filmmakers cannot come out as flat earthers, cannot do it because if they do, they're going to be labeled immediately. You don't want if You're trying to make it in Hollywood. If you're filmmakers, you can't just say, oh yeah, we're flat earth producers. No, 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 no. No, you're going to say, oh yeah, we're doing a story about flat earthers. And then you just deadpan it. You know, it's like, uh-huh. And you wait for the reaction. It's like, oh, these guys nuts. It's like, well, they were interesting. You know, but at the same time, you don't want to get our ire because, you know, we've got all our death squads and you know. <laughs> death squads. Um, let's see. Issa Mahalski is here and Twitwit has joined us as well. Hello to both of you and Tommy Rogers and Baz Baz. And um, uh, we're being trolled a little bit by Flat Earth Life, who's asking, do these people work? Uh, by the way, Flat Earth Life, we'd like you to send us your complete lifetime resume, all the jobs you've had and the salaries you've made. Please send no, it to why, why even do that? at gmail.com. We'd like to do an expose him, on your finances. Bank statements use, too, please. Have them use his real name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's all I need because uh, that's your face. Here. I'm Mark Sargent. You can look <laughs> us up anytime. Do I work? <laughs> yeah, I do this all freaking day long. Oh, all God. I do is Flat Earth. Over Martin and over Leakey and over. just smacked him down. He's had a very fair run of trolley comments. He doesn't get smacked down right away. Most of the mods in the channel let people do their thing for a while, and then when they go a little too far, then then they gotta go. You know. 
I do have a lot of wrenches in the chat, but a lot of them are more like ceremonial wrenches. If you're around a while, I give you a wrench. It doesn't mean you must defend my honor. Not at all. I mean, it's nothing to do with that. It's when somebody is just becoming insulting to anybody in the chat at all, or insulting of the idea of researching flat earth, or just just nuts, crazy, and drunk, or on meth. They get mm, the wrench. On meth, yeah. Yeah. Now you're making me want meth. I don't even know what it is I'm on top of it. When like, I think of doing? meth, I think of a white powder. I'm probably wrong. I should look it up and say, like, what do you what inject is it? Meth? Do, you, do you eat it? Do you stick People it in, in your People in their ear? late 40s and 50s who don't know what meth is. It sounds like a BuzzFeed clip. <laughs> that is pretty much. I don't. I, don't I did not do a lot of drugs. I mostly, know. mostly because people wouldn't let me do drugs. Because they said he's a little too out there as it is. Yeah, I Give think it anything. is. I, 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 I know. I seriously, when I got to university, that like my first week, I saw some kids in a hallway doing shrooms on pizza, and they were laughing and laughing and laughing, and they looked like they were having the best time. It was like six or seven guys just just laughing hysterically, where their ribs were like pulling muscles, and I was going, "Oh, I, I want, I want to have what they're having." Right? You know that line from. Um, uh, oh, Harry and Sally. Yes, yeah, when Harry and Sally. Oh my gosh! Girl. The very first time you forgot a movie reference, and I remembered well, it. I was gonna get it eventually. No, you were. Never. Uh -uh. Fine. Who's nope. the actress? S not Meg Ryan. Else. Who's the other one? Billy Crystal. Okay, you win. You win. <sighs> Harry Fisher was in it. All right. Harry Fisher was the best friend. Yeah, She's you're right. Up. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, don't you dare. <laughs> it's like, I, I know, out movie I know. Park. No, 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 no. Movie King, I am not worthy. No, I no, you gotta remember. And by the way, I'm I'm sorry that I subscribed to a non flat earth channel, but I had to I had to support that girl from Mindless Ooh. Enter Mindless Entertainment. Oh yes. I know the, you mentioned I, it she's last. gotta be in her mid twenties. Jesse Jesse Milestone. Great name. Je Jesse Milestone, and if it's real, I hope it's real. And she went on that rant about uh, about Star Wars, and I just was like moved. It's like, oh, so great. Was that her channel name, Jesse Milestone? No, her channel name is literally Mindless Entertainment. Oh, Mindless Entertainment. It's a okay. good channel name. So she's got well, like five thousand. I subscribe stuff. to a bunch of channels that aren't flat Earth. None of them are anti flat Earth, but they have nothing to do with flat Earth specifically. All, all of mine are flat Earth, with the exception of hers and Red Letter Media. Mm. Oh, and I told you, I told you, I got my thing from them, right? Did I tell you last week? Mm -mm. Oh my God. So remember I was telling you, so Red Letter Media, they also do movie stuff. You know, I, I do follow people that rate movies and they're like movie snobs and they just they'll shred things and uh, they've got, I don't know, 700,000 subs, pretty, pretty decent sized channel. And I bought to support them because I will support some people. I bought some prints, some caricatures, you know, like you used to get in Hawaii on the beach. It's like, oh, I'm doing a caricature of you. And they had the three guys and I, I got them and it's like, you know what? I want them autographed. So I shipped it to them and I put in money for postage in a nice note saying, look, I'm a fan, autograph these and send them to me. And it took them freaking a month to get it back to me, but I finally got it. And I was harassing them because I was telling people in Q and A shows and strange worlds, like anybody has any bored downtime, email contact at red letter media and say mark wants his stuff <laughs> and that's they, funny i don't know if that's what did it but yeah they finally sent it that's so, cool anyway why are we talking about that no idea that's what uh, happens every single show we're like where are we we're in the weeds where, get us back where, to flutter let me talk about the newsweek story real quick well i do want to say that goddess witch bella says i see a lot of meth users in my city apparently it makes you want to ride a bicycle all day and panhandle anyone who stops by the market to shop <laughs> when hey when i was down at that meetup at colorado springs because mm -hmm. I stayed at a motel. Mm -hmm. Motel. <laughs> yeah, I think you've mentioned before, it's the kind of place where you should probably bring your own soap. <laughs> Thin walls, liquor store, two liquor stores within a golf shot of the place. And also One probably was, a, um, a pawn shop nearby. Convenient. Convenient. Well, the, the liquor store actually had the most extensive security system, including one of those bolt doors. Ooh. So if you if you make it, try to make it for the door, the register guy can hit a button right. and you're not getting out. Smoke and shop nearby, strip club nearby, and really weird looking Chinese restaurant, right? Right? Even even <laughs> the, the liquor the same liquor store had a wall of shame with photographs from the camera system of people trying to make it out with alcohol. And oh, one wow. guy, one guy <laughs> with like a trucker's hat and a torn up t-shirt had like a bottle in each hand. It was like, you know, 
a you know shot of him you know running you know trying to go stride for stride i think he ran right into the door do you but, ever see those video we have to go back to the topic but those videos that they have where people are shoplifting and it's usually women together a woman with a, a baby carriage or women with very long dresses or tops and they're like literally shoving bottles of alcohol oh, or things don't. up their skirts it's amazing how fast they are don't you know, get, don't get me started. That the catches whole, it. One of the reasons I created the Empty Shelves Survival Guide for anyone. If anyone wants it, it's free. I'll just I'll do is email me, say, I want survival guide. You don't even have to put anything in the body. And I'll sh I'll shoot it off to you. It's a PDF. It's only like two megs. And the reason one of the reasons I did that was during the Northridge earthquake in California back back in the day. The uh the people looted instantly. So you saw the well, so the power goes out, but the closed circuit cameras were battery powered. And so you saw the inside of these malls, right? And it was like shake, 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 you know, and then power goes out and people looked around for, I don't know, maybe two seconds. And then everybody just ran into the stores and just started grabbing everything they could because they knew no one was going to get to them. It was like, nope, the cops are going to be so freaking busy. No one is ever, ever going to. And plus the cameras must be off. But it was amazing how fast they looted. Amazing. It was instantaneous. People will loot. And it's every single type of person that you could ever imagine. Oh, yeah. Um, grandmothers, children, men, women, yep. race, age, gender doesn't really matter. It's just when people have that in them that they're going to steal that's what they'll do. So, yep. And some people might be doing it because they're starving and they need to feed their family. But most of the time, those are organized groups and they're run by somebody who probably takes a cut of everything. And it's really, really a whole bad situation. As and like I like to say with the rest of them, that is why greed is one of the seven. Yeah, that's true. But also people get caught in really horrible spaces in their mind and in their life. And, you know, who the fault of all that is would probably be the governments you. that we pay taxes to and maybe in the very end it all comes down to us for allowing a society like that where something like that happens where all people aren't provided for you know i when i was working in the time and attendance industry because we were installing time clocks and the reason we were installing time clocks is because people cheated on their time cards why because if people feel that they're being underpaid they will do whatever it takes to compensate for that pay gap oh, yeah, people people steal staplers from their office oh, or, God, or tape yes. for, but they don't even really need it they do it because my like, damn boss blah, 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 and then I, they we, just take it i i was in a case where we actually had people arrested people went to jail because what they were doing was as people th this big factory and as they were firing people they would contact them later and say okay buddy here's what's happening i know you're home alone not doing anything we're going to keep paying you these are the hr guys right we're going to keep paying you you're going to kick us back half your check and nobody's gonna know anything it's like really and what? yeah they were they did that with like i don't know 15 pushing 20 people and the new hr was some of the new hr people finally discovered it and yeah it was a big deal people went wow. to jail yeah. well let me go back into the live chat let me pull it up and see what's happening um somebody asked if we're talking about stealing and looting yeah actually we yeah, are yeah, yeah, well, I, 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 in my book uh, or in my my manual i have an entire separate like two or three chapters on looting how and and the positive aspect of looting, if things really go bad in society, exactly. Help Shoot your first, ask questions later. Loot but at this during point, the this is not good. However, Markovsky's got a great point. Boy, Markovsky always has a great point. He says tax is theft. So there we go. We have a society where stealing is seen as a good thing. <laughs> And we yeah, do it, you don't want to you don't want to let them start. money voluntarily really i mean not really we don't volunteer we, we, if you don't you you're afraid that they're going to come get you i mean what yeah so yeah mess it's a mess it's all a mess i don't really know what to do other than to recognize that the problem all starts with each one of you're, us you're Richard. already doing it save the world flat earth perhaps and you know opening up your mind to the fact that you're not the center of the world it's another one yeah. Other people have problems you don't even understand. Um, what else is going on? <laughs> Zulu one brings it down to the low level by saying, looting, I could use a bigger TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, they're light nowadays. So can, two guys, you can carry out a 70 inch. No that's problem. That's very true. Um, I have told the story before that I was in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina and I didn't evacuate. And finally, somebody knocked on my door and said, hey, they've opened up the Walmart 
you, you can go get anything you want. And I thought, oh, wait, that's good. That means the power is coming back on in that part of the city. I'm going to drive over there and I don't want to go to Walmart anyway, but I just want to see lights and people. So I went over there and yeah, they opened Walmart. It was people looting and people were uh, looting crazy and the police were allowing it because I guess they couldn't stop it. They were, you know, with their no, arms no. crossed in police you, cars, yeah. watching people loot, all sorts of different types of people. Yeah. And uh, I saw people at that time, there were screen, there were TVs that were, there were flat ones, but there were also the thicker ones in shopping carts, just wheeling them out, wheeling them back over to their house if they lived nearby near the Walmart. I mean, so, in the long run, the stores are insured and not to say that it's right. And but it's just stuff. It's possession. Just stuff. And it's long. No, the cops are there in case they see some, you know, like people murder. killing each other yeah. over a TV. But, you know, the funny thing was there was no... Uh, there was no power <laughs> at all in New Orleans. I mean, I ended up leaving New Orleans and moving out completely only to move back much later on and help with the rebirth of the city because I opened up a store there. But aside from that, the people were stealing electronics, which they couldn't plug into the wall because there was no power for quite a long time. I thought right, that was kind of right. funny. It, hell, there was, uh, if you if you read my manual, there was a little story which I loved, which was, yeah, of course, you know, the law enforcement for the most part is is on the up and up and yet there was part of the new orleans police department that realized that one of the cadillac dealerships was going to go underwater yeah. and so they busted into the place and started driving cars out of town exactly that was covered up too also there were uh, police officers who actually shot people regular everyday average people sure um just for the fun of it i think sure. i mean I, look, that ended up going to court there's a reason why I made the manual thing. And the reason yet. that the police officers did it is I think that they just didn't like the color of the skin of the people that they shot. I'll just leave it at that. Really disturbing, really disgusting. Were they, were and they white people? Just horrible, horrible, sad. Yeah. Uh, you'd think we'd have learned by now, but we it's like we never learn. Let me, let me, where do you want to segue from here? I don't know. I, okay, let me, let me segue to the. <laughs> I'm going to start drinking. <laughs> no. All right. Um, to the end of the world. Yes, cheers. Um, you were going to talk about your survival guide. Anybody wants one, it just mm. tells you how to survive in a case of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just email me, say I want survival guide. And my only recommendation, uh, because it, nobody does, is print it out. Oh, Don't yeah. just get an electronic version because then you're going to be looking at your cell phone. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I can just scroll through this. It's like, really? How's your battery doing? It's like, well, I can charge it on my, my car. Well, for how long? Well, then, while but, people are stealing like liquor from a liquor store or whatever, NASA is stealing money each day from there. You go. It's the big money. Well, let's not yeah. talk about the wars. Uh, there's an article in Newsweek that came. That's how out. we bring it all back to flat Earth here. By the yep. way, folks, that's yep. how we. Do I'm going to bring it back. So <laughs> yesterday, as a matter of fact, an article written by Kate Sheridan, one of our not necessarily detractors, but she's been coming after us pretty good. The title is very interesting. It says "Flat Earth Illuminati and Fake Moon Landing: Our Conspiracy Theory Videos Hurting YouTube." And that's literally the opening, that, that is the title of it. And she goes on about, it gives examples about how people are making money. And that's, that was, thank God she didn't mention one of ours. But it's true, which is, look, YouTube is no different than any other business. And they, they are going to- conspiracy theories. Yeah, because people click on them. The, the yes. guy that worked for YouTube that got out recently, he, he, he was first one of me. He's like, look, when somebody watches 20 flat earth videos in a row, what do you think they're going to recommend? You know, YouTube wants you to keep watching. And so if flat earth is what is what's hot, they're just going to keep firing those in there. I and mean, what's hot right now, aside from cat videos, that's, you know, a, a that's old hat. That's old um, cat. And I do subscribe to a few cat video channels. I will admit that's uh, whatever guilty pleasure. Um, the transvestigation channels. That's a big thing. That's conspiracy based. Uh, stuff about Donald Trump, like Donald Trump really is Vladimir Putin or, <laughs> you know, these kinds of things. Um, even flat earth, of course, even YouTube has been saturated with all your normal stuff, which is why we see all these big channels, which aren't flat earth channels, you know, different news channels and different, uh, reaction channels and, uh, entertainment coverage channels, even PewDiePie, you know, troll channels. They're all just like, okay, they're scrambling. It's like, okay, what's, yeah, what's PewDiePie's not a troll channel. He's an entertain and I don't like PewDiePie. Okay. But he's an entertainment channel for those who like that sort of entertainment. Ta He's a troll. Come on. His, his very first video, his most important, the, the video that put him on the map was him trolling a Minecraft video. 
literally that was it. It was just him laughing and pointing at it wasn't even it wasn't even coherent. It was just him laughing and pointing at a freaking Minecraft zombie getting stuck in a Minecraft tree. That was it. That was the whole freaking just him laughing endlessly. And I people mean I would laugh at a Minecraft video too, but for different reasons. I just don't get it at all. I just think it's a huge waste of time. Yeah, he's yeah he's. I don't get me off on PewDiePie. I don't want to get started. But the point is, is that Newsweek, yeah, you know, a reputable place there, and, and flat Earth first reputable thing. Reputable for lies and fake news. Da 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 da. Well, no, they but they've been around for a long time. Okay. okay. And and YouTube. Remember, YouTube is only thirteen years old now. Wow, amazing. And. They are, and and later this year, they're going to tie in Wikipedia entries to some conspiracy videos, as you you may or may not I have heard. I've seen something like that on a video already. So when you put up like moon hoax videos, eventually what's going to happen, and they're not going to really tell people when they do this. It's not going to be this drop dead date. They're just going to just introduce it like this is what they do, uh, because YouTube is Google. So if you type in a moon hoax video. And you have it up on your screen right below the video will be a wiki entry to moon landings you know the basically the the counter the the democratic response it's like okay you here's let me brainwash you click here <laughs> yeah now who's to say people are going to click on maybe they will maybe they won't but wiki entries are going to get pretty damn boring it's not like youtube can reference other youtube videos really I don't think they're going to say they're going to use space videos or nasa videos they might well we'll see but I think they're going to start with wiki entries because wiki is considered in social media uh, the closest thing to an information Bible. Even though it's really dry and boring and not nearly as interesting as a video, I don't think it's going to do any good. But but they aren't tying anything to Flat Earth yet, as far as I know. Well, it's all about algorithms, really. What's They're, they're starting with the moon landing at JFK. Yeah. Oh, interesting. You know. Two big things people are uh, very interested in. This is interesting. After the Vegas shooting in October of 2017, the uh, Wall Street Journal caught the algorithm suggesting videos claiming the event was a false flag. And then right. they changed it. And then the top five results for a search about Las Vegas shooting included a video claiming the government agents were responsible for the attack. Oh, heck, look at uh, look at Parkland. And then farther down, farther down, videos by people that we know who said other things about the attack. Look or at... Lack look at that. look at how quickly uh, David Hogg got mm -hmm. famous. Yeah, and he didn't get famous just because he got up there and was you know saying gun rights. He got best famous. meme ever. You showed me the other day. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> explain it. Paint the picture in everyone's mind. I'm using it. It the it was sent to me. I didn't create it. It was uh it was the profile of the Tesla Roadster in space, but instead of the astronaut, it's got David Hogg standing up in it. Nice. Doing his non-smiling pose, and so that's what I'm going to use for the thumbnail for. This it would show. have been cool if they used that pose. If everyone remembers when he's wearing that gray suit and he did that speech, and at the right. very end of the speech he did this. It looked like Saturday Night Fever with the uh, gray suit. I don't know. That was a good whatever and funny I, pose. Look, I understand. I, I'm not even coming after him so much because I know he's he's a, a pawn for that a particular lobby. And Once in a while, I think. What if these things did happen and these are actually real people? Are people that nuts? Are people that weird? No, 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 no. He, he's, he was an opportunist and he was in the right place at the right time. If indeed any of that, you know, ugh, I don't want to get the video. No, no, I mean, now. right place, meaning he had the motivation. It's like, you know, he's well, the he gave two different stories. One of his stories was that uh, he was there when the shooting was happening. And the other one was, I rode as fast as I could on my bike from my house when I heard about the shooting to interview people. Right. Uh, which one was it? Right. Right. Yeah. I, so. Again, that story, I mean, the, the their little rallies are gone and, you know, it's it'll be... Things move on. When's yeah. the next uh, tragedy yeah, yeah. really going to you know, happen? You'll say, oh, it's going to make a difference. Like, no, 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 no. People are already forgetting. I've, I actually mentioned this a couple of days ago. I used the term Mandalay Bay and somebody looked at me like, What's but that? I, what's that? I'm going, you know, the hotel. Oh, right. That ha that was a thing. It's like, what do you mean it was a thing? It was not that long ago. Yeah, things go, you know, what, October. It was just, it's just October, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of mainstream news and um, speaking of people we don't like, uh, David Hogg to Alex Jones of InfoWars. He is being sued by the parents of Candy Hook. <laughs> it, in, for, yeah defamation of defamation character lawsuit, yeah and 
he, he says it's all crisis actors and uh, you know what he says now of course wall. alex is anti-flat earth and yeah. i believe he's a gatekeeper it's oh no 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 i don't i don't think he's necessarily well, he's a gatekeeper on flat earth i don't on, think that he's I don't think he knew it and found it not to be valid. I think I don't think he's told. necessarily anti flat Earth because remember mm -hmm. they reached out that show wanted to do it and they were like a lot of when we'll get into the Enar. Why Coos wouldn't thing. he do a show on flat Earth because he, he is after all so hot right now. He wow. at the time he's still nervous about it. Why he, does David Ike not do it? Mm, because they're scared. Gatekeeper. They're scared. Okay, so it's either they're scared and who who wants cowards? Well, I, in look, the fight if you, for truth. If you there's some people that do and a lot of people that don't. Look how many of those big channels it took them a while uh, until PewDiePie. Oh, they waited until everybody else is in. The yeah, it's like oh, more. PewDiePie made a video on it. I can do it. No one should be able yeah, to. No one's right, crush right. me. In in Alex Jones's case, their producers. I mean, they told me. They said straight up. They said we can't do a show that mentions the word flat earth which is why they asked me can we do it without using the term flat earth because we're afraid of the backlash from subs Wh whether it be the his private channel or the youtube channel or what he were sponsors, afraid um, yes yeah, sponsors were afraid of the backlash and i've had out of all the interviews i've done i think 10 percent of them actually mentioned it to me beforehand it's like look i'm really nervous about doing this because i don't know what's going to happen you know i don't know if people are going to come back at me you know, unless unless maybe I try to attack you and it's, it was that's that's Alex Jones case. But let's get back to on track here. Alex well, Jones, Sandy Hook, it's that even that little story is going to help us because I mean, how, what year? I don't, I forgot what year Sandy Hook was. 2012. Yeah, as long six years. Really? Was it only six years ago? Yeah, it seems like much longer. Doesn't it, it seems like so much longer. <laughs> well, uh, two people, parents of a uh, six-year-old Noah Posner and another six-year-old named uh, Jesse Helslin, two the parents of them are filing this uh, lawsuit Monday afternoon, this past Monday. Six um, years later, you're going to sue him? Well, the thing is, is that's because Alex Jones has been saying it's all fake. And I'm not sure how long Alex Jones has been saying it, but let's say since 2012, 2013, just a guess, probably. Um I think that Alex Jones is in the pockets of the elite. That's my thoughts. You think that he just doesn't want to lose subs or advertisers. Either way, if he's chicken or if he's, you know, bought. Either way, um, I think the, my theory is that he is knowledgeable about the truth about things. And he's been put in place almost all this time to keep things like Flat Earth on the DL down low. And this lawsuit, I think it's going to get settled out of court meaning it's never going to go to court. And if there is an actual court case, it's going to be a fake court case. I think that way they'll be able to say, you know, Alex Jones had to pay some crazy ginormous amount of money to the parents of these, these he, two children at Candy Hook. He, and they won't have to actually pay because it won't be a real suit or won't be really settled out of court. But it'll put a stamp on the whole case of, 100% debunked, RIP, done deal. Sandy Hook was, or excuse me, Candy Hook was real. Hmm. So maybe Alex is there for just such a reason. He's being hey. tapped now, shoulder tapped. Time to go in, Alex. You got to you gotta do this. Yeah. Possible. I suppose. Sa Sandy Hook, for me, it comes down to uh, one simple thing. I'll boil it down, boil it down to you in 30 seconds. I'll give $1,000 to anyone that can show me video, not still shots, video of a law enforcement officer carrying out a child from the school. The thing Six, is, 600 is that students, not a single one was shown in if on video. If Alex is real, he could yeah. use his power, his, 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 I don't know, his moxie to get a lawyer to get the Sandy, ugh, the Candy Hook people to show such footage, demand it be brought into court as evidence and get all the truth out that all of the truth seekers have been asking for, if he's real. And if we don't see that, then there you go. Hmm. Settled out of court is what I believe will occur. Hmm. Settled out of court in favor of the families, if it happens at all. It's good. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, the numbers. The numbers, numbers. Are, we've got we numbers. Are, <laughs> letters we get letters we the the numbers as you know i'm a big stat whore and i have been looking at the flat earth numbers for a while now and if you guys go into youtube you type in flat earth and you set the filter 
to upload date, you will see that not only have we broken 20 million for the first time, we started breaking it in 2018, but we're up to 20.3 and has not gone backwards in a long time. And you're saying, okay, Mario, what's, what's the point? What's that compared to? Uh, take your pick at this point. Beforehand, I was saying that, well, you couldn't put us up against some of the heavy hitters like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and, and people like that. And yes, you can. You can now. Like if you type in Donald Trump, he comes in at 22. If you type in Katy Perry, I think she comes in at 24. And I think Taylor comes in, sorry, Tay Tay comes in at 27. And that means we are now, I mean, remember, we haven't even hit the highest tier media when it comes to exposure. These are the, the people that I'm mentioning, uh, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Donald Trump, uh, Lady Gaga. These are marketing machines. They have spent millions of dollars on advertising. We don't spend jack uh, divided by squat. We don't, we don't have any of that stuff. And yet our numbers now are actually within reach of these guys. That's how hot flat earth is right now. Right. Is, and by which, we, you mean uh, flat earth in general, be it a pro video or a con video, a video right. that talks about other things and flat earth. Right. Or, you know, oh, well, way. Same, same thing applies to them. I so mean, you're saying that flat earth is of, catching on more yeah. than, than you could imagine and is becoming more popular than people's searches for Katy Perry. For, for anything, really. I mean, which honestly, is good. Put in a video, put put it in the title, type in the Beatles. Type Lady Gaga. We're destroying Lady Gaga. I knew what about really things shit. that people find more important than stupid Lady Gaga or whatever? Like, like um this thing that's going on in Syria or you know world hunger or any sorts of things that are really nothing. more important. We're, dest we're destroying them all. I mean, NASA, we we're tripling NASA's numbers. We, every every video that's ever been made about NASA. If I type it in, hang on, real quick. Stay with me. I know my microphone's gonna be less. I, I can't in, hear you very well. <laughs> I type in NASA and I set the filter to upload date. NASA comes in at nine. Sorry, we're doubling NASA. We're more than doubling NASA. We haven't run tripling them. That's every video that's ever even mentions the word NASA. They come in at nine. We're coming in at 20. That gives you an idea. The Beatles, we're bigger than them. Lady Gaga comes in at 16. Whether or not Paul McCartney's dead. <laughs> See exactly. my last video for more details. <laughs> we are, we are, the, the community, the flat earth community is monstrous. The, there's no, there's no such thing as coincidence that the reason why all these big channels, when you type in flat earth and you see all these verified channels, big, heavy hitters, all the big ones now are in it. I mean, whether they're news channels or entertainment channels or troll channels or prank channels, they're all getting in on it because they're, you know, the line from Zoolander, it's so hot right now. Mm-hmm. I was just hoping you'd say that again. Yeah. But by, <laughs> by we, you don't mean people who agree with you or even like you. You mean anybody discussing flat earth pro or con. Anybody oh, yeah. But, but the same thing could be said of any of these topics. I mean, how many anti-Trump videos are there? A whole bunch. And he's coming in at 22 million. How many people hate Taylor Swift? There's a few out there. I'm not one of them. Love you, Taylor. The uh, They're coming in. Really? <laughs> Seriously. She's a goddess. The... Um, She's so talented. Uh, any, any pro or cons, I mean, you can you can do the same thing. And we are coming. Yes, there's a lot of, of flat earth hate videos, but there's a lot more pro. A lot more pro. So many people that are woken up. Yeah. Remember, remember, flat earth generates so much enthusiasm that people will create YouTube channels for the very first time. It's like, I'm so excited. I'm just going to put myself on camera with no editing and talk about flat earth for three or four videos in a row. And most of them stick which we should segue into every once in a while on a rare blue moon, someone falls off the path. Yes, and there is a man among us who has fallen off the path. Who is it, Patricia? Well, it's a gentleman that I interviewed a few shows back, and um, his name is Inar Kusk. And Inar had come out with a video today um, he's the one who did the Finding the Curve documentary. And um, he messaged me about like six months ago, I guess, and said, please remove the interview that you did with me. And I, I did. I put it on private. And I don't do that, but I did. I've done it for uh, a couple of people that have requested it. 
but he said that he was wanting to pursue his acting career and that it would uh, lessen his chances of getting roles if they thought he was a crazy conspiracy theorist. But he's still a flat earther. And he assured me a couple times in messages that he was working on something big that would be coming out soon that would even be more helpful to flat earth. And I'm like, okay, I'll put the video on private and put it back up later. Well, he came out with a video today where he opens up with what looks like whiskey that he's pouring into a glass and he's not much he, whiskey left, by the way. Yeah. And uh, maybe that was just a prop being that he is an actor, but he was saying that he's done with flat earth because he doesn't really know. And he's never seen the earth from that perspective before. But he's never seen the globe well before either. The, uh, and when he got to the two minute and 45 second mark, he was basically saying that he thought that flat earth would kill his career. Yes, that's exactly the reason why. This truth seeking about flat earth or anything that you are passionate about, whether you're pairing flat, flat earth with, um, if you're Christian or flat earth and um, whatever it may be, because many of us have multiple passions that are all about truth seeking. It's not for the faint of heart. No. It's not for the weak minded. It's not, um, you know, a, a fun, yee fun ride like on a roller coaster although we laugh and joke on this show um it is a serious topic which we do know we laugh and joke because you know we we enjoy having fun as all humans do but if you're not able to take the heat then get out of the kitchen and i like enar kusk but in some way when you see a video like that that old expression of don't let the door hit you on the way out can apply and that's pretty hard coming he, from me he is going to regret it because well this, you know he did his job he did put out good videos in finding the curve and perhaps those have he, awakened lots of people he's but quit, he's quit before though yes, we've seen has. this this is not the first time he's yes. quit this is the first time we've seen him quit and actually make a video while he's doing it Right. After a whole bunch of whiskey. It's like, uh, come on, man. I feel bad for him because if it is hampering his ability to find a job, he's got to put food on the table. I don't know his situation. I think he's single, but we don't know his situation. But yet, this is a, it's a, truth seeking is a lifetime commitment. You can't just say, I know the truth now, and I'm now going to fold back into the matrix and just play along with the game. Yeah. You, I, I don't know yeah. what he's, Honestly, I don't know what he's thinking. The flat earth is weapons grade hot right now. <laughs> what? Whether it's hot or not, whether it's completely deeply unpopular, whatever the truth is that you find to hold dear, it's it's like cutting off your arm when you when you disengage yourself from something like that. It doesn't make sense to me. I have had so very few moments of doubt during my journey through this so far so very very few well the auto hoaxing thing when everything looks like it's a hoax that comes across yeah. the screen that is you know perhaps maybe dangerous but everything does seem to look pretty fake to me um that the, could be an issue and i sometimes wonder like i said before you know with the florida thing what if all that were real what if there really were shots and then i think well where's the video you know yeah. it all comes down to where's the video we're a cell phone obsessed society where's the video um, so I, if, I, I have a little doubt and then my rational sense steps in and says, I don't see any proof that this story is what they say. Are, me, they, are the people in charge trying to protect our virgin eyes from seeing blood and gore while meanwhile Hollywood puts out another movie with an exploding head in it? I mean, what? How did you know I was a virgin one? It's really <laughs> weird. The, uh, no, let me, let me do a quick little motivation for the troops, which is. If you were worried, it's like, oh, well, maybe, maybe flat earth isn't real. Maybe it isn't real. It's like, really? Because if that was the case, why after three years have not one single academic stepped forward? Not one, not retired, not current, not somebody doing it for a special project or a grant or that had funding to do it. Why have none of them stepped forward to even think about debating us? Well, some would say, uh, playing the devil's advocate, that they think we're ridiculous and they won't lower themselves to be so unscientific. Do you want me to rattle off my subject matter list? Actually, yes, please do. How about this? All right. How about all these people who I have talked to, who I have either interviewed or gotten testimonies from? And you know, how did these people get a hold of you? They just tracked me down because I put my Did phone you contact any of them? Did you everything? Them? Look, you know me. My autobiography is going to be called unsolicited. 
I don't pick up the phone. I hardly call anybody back. My phone just keeps ringing. You already have an autobiography ringing. title. Hey, why not? <laughs> and I, I listen to voicemails. All I, I cannot tell you how many thousands of voicemails I have, I have listened to and and listened to every one of them and deleted. Uh, I saved some of the fun ones though. I played them for you. So, but all these people have tracked me down and said, look, I've got something to say regarding your flat earth. And none of these people have recanted on their testimonies. In fact, nobody has even come out against them. Ready? Let's rattle them off real quick. If anyone wants to listen to Strange World, I know this is going to be old hat, but. And these are on your channel under subject. These are all on my channel. Experts. Yep. Subject matter expert testimony shows playlist. You can go into the Strange World playlist and listen to them all. United States A Navy missile instructor, United States Air Force navigator, a Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing, uh, specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, an air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner. An aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor of 27 years, a 32nd degree Mason, an etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, an airline co-pilot, an industrial vacuum expert, a merchant marine, an army air traffic controller, United States Navy quartermaster, and United States Navy electronic warfare guy. All of these guys have come and contacted me since, what, the end of 2015? And I've done some as recent as, what, a month ago? all have said the same thing they're saying yeah you're on to something the community is on to something there's there's something here which has something big so big that we could no one could see it we were living inside it no one could figure it out because we could not see if this is a i i've never seen a better example of you could not see the forest for the trees and so no there's no there's never been a doubt in my mind for a long 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 time yeah, so moments of weakness here and there when I when I listen to trolls and I really shouldn't listen to trolls or feed them, but even I do it every once in a while. Just mm -hmm. to, yeah, sometimes you have to just to let off steam. So yeah. you said unsolicited. If you ever had an autobiography, would be your autobiography. Yeah, it would be everything. Everything has come. That's the other reason why I think it's it's happening because I don't want it to happen. It's just is just an amusement park ride card that grabbed me and's been taking me along for the ride. I didn't ask anybody for this stuff. I didn't want to do flat earth. Flat earth is a terrible idea. And yet here we are three years later on the cusp of, well, whatever this next level is going to be flying out to it. Yeah, indeed. Exciting, mm. exciting times. I'm really glad to be a part of this and I <sighs> hope that I'm contributing something. I mean, I guess we all contribute something just simply by being here and speaking out. I mean, um, I'm doing, Go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, I'm doing my third meetup with DM Marble this Sunday, as a matter of fact. I mean, that's how much we've kind of gotten into this thing where it's like, oh, oh yeah, steps. another meetup, DM Marble. Yeah, that'll Up be in, good. Tell us about that very quickly for those who don't know where it is and time it, and place and that sort of It thing. is going to be North Seattle. So the people that have been complaining there isn't anything north of Seattle, this is where it's going to be. It's going to be in Muckleteo which is a little seaside town with a ferry boat next to it. The ferry boat. I've right been there. Along. Yes, you have. I've we been actually muckle teal, teal ferry boat. Yes. Several times. Yes. You have. Uh, and once, once you go one way, you got to come back. <laughs> you know, I, I could read into that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> the totally did that while you're drinking deliberately. Oh, she's got to swallow it. <laughs> I did. Amazing. I right. am the unicorn. There will be no spit takes here. So, Wow. So, so many ways I could do that. The um, uh, so we're gonna do in the Muckle Teo thing with D Marble, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be at Ivers Landing, a restaurant down there on literally on the water. We've got the banquet room, and if we get kicked out for whatever reason, because I don't know how long we can actually hold a banquet room, kind of like we did at Anthony's, or like D Marble gets mad and like shoves a table over and gets in a fist fight with all free people, free people, and really. Really? That can happen. That can, that kind of guy. I, <laughs> no, I don't know. Neither. Uh, yeah, neither there's, a, there's a bar literally right across the street from it, so we can we can go there if if we need to. That'll be kind of fun. In case, because honestly, you know the the meetups they do last a little bit long, and then then uh, that's this Sunday, and then the week after that, you and I are going to be doing our meetup, which oh, is yeah. going to be at Spin Bar and Food in toronto it's called spin because it's a ping pong bar you don't need to play ping pong to come but i'm going to be there ready to play 
you're not actually bringing your own paddle, right? No, I don't have my own paddle. But you have special shoes, don't you? I do. I got some Converse high tops that are purple metallic. Oh, uh, God. I don't know why. I just thought it would fit with ping pong because ping pong reminds me of the 70s. Converse remind me of the 70s. Chuck Taylor's. And I have some already, but purple, I don't know why, purple metal. Meaning it reminds me of the 70s and, you know, your parents' basement and a ping pong table and a pool table and, I don't know, memories, you know, those sorts of yeah. things. It'll, It'll be, be fun. fun. Yeah. So a lot of meetups um, happening. You've got a, a video on that and you're going to put out another one soon in case anybody wants to attend yep. with the date, time, and address. Yep. Um, yeah, I want to talk about Vince White. It's a name that some people may say, wait, that sounds familiar. Vince White. Who is Vince White? Well, it's this guy that came on the scene and did videos everywhere. All sorts of different channels did interviews with him. I didn't. But he said he was going to be doing a comic book slash card game with a character, I think, who was called Flat Man or something. Um, the character, it, it, the whole thing is called Flat and uh, he got a Kickstarter going, and he got about $5,500 together from people who donated. I donated. Many other people did. And there were different tiers of donation. And uh, he just sort of went dead. And people were saying, oh, he ripped everybody off. But ye of little faith, he's back. Message came through on Kickstarter today, and he writes, Hi, all. It's been a long journey, but the turn to home is finally coming up around the bend. After death threats, break-ins, stalkers behind my house, relocating and gathering the courage to say, F it, I can finally say flat is coming. To prove it, I've posted a Dropbox link to the semi-completed rough thumbnails of issue one. It's missing the last two pages for some dramatic effect. If you're not too worried about spoilers, follow it and take a peek. It might take me a few months to finally finish the book, but I'm working on it back and forth between my day job and my other comic book line called The Powerverse. So he leaves a link for those who did uh, donate. You found out about it. But for those who are wondering whatever happened with Vince White, there you go. Now, the one thing I'll say about Vince White, he may have completely great intentions. And he may have had all those horrible things he said happened to him. Who am I to say that he didn't? But keep people abreast of what's going on. Mm. If you say you're going to come out with something in May of 2016, and you just sort of go silent for a super long time, no one's going to have too much faith in you. And people are going to start thinking that there's something suspicious happening. So like anyway, Tiger Dan, yeah. I mean, I don't know. So that's the story about Flat. Maybe everything's going to be cool. I did message Vince White and said, when you get the comic book ready to go, I'll have you on my show and we'll discuss it. Not that that's some kind of big reward or anything, but I mean, I wanted to be positive with him because people have been giving him a hard time. And I'm totally open to the fact that he had all those things happen to him. We've all had bad things happen to us. But it, you just keep people in the loop, you know? Let's just say you had a, uh, um, you were supposed to meet a friend for dinner in a movie, and then you had a flat tire. Well, you'd call the person and say, I can't make it, right? Yeah. Well, what if you didn't call that person for over a year? <laughs> it just doesn't look good. Exactly. You, you know, anyway. What, what if you had a high profile assassination you were supposed to carry out, and then they changed the route on you at the last minute? And it's like, look, you gave me the old route. I was paid for the old route. You can't like, it's like no, no, you got to do this. Do you know more about the JFK shooting that you're letting on? <laughs> Is that just an admission? Are you much so, older than you look? <laughs> let's segue into- <laughs> You got into... a face transplant operation? <laughs> um, Why, Patricia, that's- <laughs> The um no, what I was gonna say was the uh, we should segue into no because you were mentioning that you you really do have to keep people uh, apprised of what's happening. Oh, yeah. So look, it's the era of social media. If right. you're not, I'm not saying you have to update Facebook every freaking fifteen minutes, but you gotta you gotta let people know. However, there are exceptions to the rule. Look at Tiger Dan, for example. He hasn't made a video, but he didn't you know, collect over five thousand dollars from people who had given from their heart. I mean. Personally, a flat earth comic book. I'm not a comic book person. I know you are used to own a comic right, book right, right. store. I donated to, to help out somebody doing something cool. That's it. But yeah. and I don't want anything in return and never did, other than to know when it's out. Yep. That's it. You know, to know that, hey, look what look what occurred. And I had a small tiny part in helping out with that. So Vince. We hope you're doing the right thing, and we. Wish I you well. hope so too, because yeah. karma 
is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, Mike Marshallak, if anybody remembers that name or Magellan Mike, uh, there was a show that I did, episode number 202, and we're in number 227 now, so you can imagine how far back that one was. That was December of 2017. Mike Marshallak is the guy who said he wanted to do Antarctic exploration. He's like, you know what? We're talking about the shape. We're making maps. There's music. There's poetry. There's everything. But no one's talking about going and seeing what's really there. And I want to be the man to do it. He had plans to do it with boats. And now he's got some different plans that involve a plane. He's going to fly over the poles October 29th, 2018. At least those are the words that he is using. And I put a link in the description box. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a link to his website, exploringagain.com. And what it says is flight over the poles. And he came out with this information. Now, see, Mike is keeping people updated. This was posted April 11th, 2018. And like I said, December, he was on my show saying he was going to do it. April 11th, he's posting plans. That's the way to do it. Anyway, he says the time and date is set. He's going to document the journey. He's going to use a mechanical gyro compass, and he's going to run other experiments and any other scientific experiments that any other person is interested in performing. He encourages people to reach out to him. He says he can use assistance. And if you can donate equipment, that would be great. And uh, all the information is there, and you can go check it out yourself. The link is in the description box. So, hey, it's cool that people are not just saying, we need to go explore. Somebody is doing it. Now, I don't know how successful he's going to be. Um, we all know about the Antarctic Treaty. We have Taboo Conspiracies video that tells us even more than we knew before about getting anywhere close to the area. But you know what? You don't know till you try. So right. hopefully right. that'll work out. I should, how, what, did you have, have I else? made you speechless? No, no, I was, yes, I was, no, <laughs> the first time. <gasps> I don't mean oh that I want you to God. shut up, I just mean never, you know, how yeah, like, dare you. <laughs> the um, uh, no, 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 what I was gonna say was we might as well let the cat out of the bag. Wait, that's a terrible saying, might as well let the vegan dinner out of the, whatever, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the um. Uh, we always let people know because I found yesterday. So you know, I do the post show after Strange World. I'll do a little hangout with a few people just to talk. You know, sort of a backstage type thing. And a Josh from from California, you know, Uber Flat Earth. He he said, "Oh yeah, the National Geographic thing." <laughs> what the hell? How did you find out about this? I just talked to him this morning. And National Geographic, they are going to be doing a documentary and they are looking to shoot in Los Angeles sometime in May. Maybe. Cross your fingers. So I have given them all the contact info for various people down there. You know who you are. Hopefully everyone will get sorted out. But if you're in the Los Angeles area in May and you want to do something fun, we'll, we'll let you know ahead of time before it happens, hopefully. But the National Geographic is going to do their own little thing documentary they pitched it yesterday and it looks like they're moving forward with it it's green it's green lit and now isn't national geographic another one of those controlled companies my god i used to love national geographic back when i was a kid my mother got a subscription to it went back when they were the yellow frame border and they were a about yay big. When, yeah, you know. Sometimes when it comes to creative teams, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. It's kind of like Vice. Remember when when we were talking to Vice, so there was a Vice team that was going to cover the conference, which was separate from a Vice team that was in England with Nathan, mm -hmm. which was separate from a Vice team that was in Denver, I believe. They were all, and none of them knew each other. None of them were even talked to each other. They just all decided to talk to do flat earth at the same time, which was really, really strange. So in this case, yeah, National Geographic one that runs a lot of science and space stories. Remember, they, from a science, you know, a Discovery Channel, Nat Geo, History Channel. But don't forget that History Channel, they're the ones that came up with the whole Ancient Aliens series, which has been running forever. So if it helps, all they care about is ratings. All they care about it. If Nat Geo decides that it would give them better ratings to run a flat earth story, just regardless how they spin it, then that's what they're going to do. So I think it's cool. I think anything yeah. that gets the word out is good. And I, I have yeah. said this before, which is same team. What does same team mean? It means that all of us are trying to 
break the matrix wide open. Oh, I thought you were saying like a gay thing. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Only you would take it that way. All right. But same team. I even have written hashtag same team in the description box. It just means we all have our own areas of, of um, specialty, our own passions. And we bring them to the table here on Flat Earth. By passions, I mean the thing that we are concerned with, that we were concerned with before we heard about Flat Earth. And we all want to make people aware of that. But in the larger scheme of things, we're all on the same team. And without each individual person working with the thing that they are most passionate and knowledgeable about and making people aware of that, we're never going to help anyone see the light. I can't make people see the light about certain things. Other people can't make people see the light that I can make people see the light about. We all are like spokes on a wheel. We don't even have to like each other, but respecting each other is paramount. Otherwise, we're no better than those who have put us under their boot for all of this time. So hashtag same team. In fact, that's going to be our uh, secret word if you've made same it this team. far in the video. Nice. Yes, if you've made it this far. Um, leave it in the comment section of this video if you come back. It's a live chat, totally different thing. But um, So I don't have to here. like you to work with you? No, yeah, I'm no, no. so glad you said. That. Okay, guys, <laughs> I'm going to be starting up a new website. It's going to be called patriciasteersucks.com. It's going to be Patreon, <laughs> I think somebody already bought that one. <laughs> Bitcoin. It's going to have all the bells and whistles. It's going to be really, really cool. A lot of gifts, a lot of animated weirdness. So we all are um, totally different people from totally different places on earth and totally different ways. We grew up in mindsets and values and in some case, but you know, we all have something really, really important and we all are here to take, we have inside and, and show it to the world. And so I, pe here people, we go. People think it's strange that I look for out of the way, all male bars. You know, the, the last one I did seemed to be for pilots. It was called the cockpit, but <laughs> the other one I was looking for, I'd look at recently. It's brand new. I'm going to try it out this weekend before the meetup. It's called tail gunners. Yeah. And Patricia sinks into her drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not an illusion. This is not a mirage. <laughs> hey, on a funny note, Markovsky in the chat just said, if you ever have doubts, think car in space. Bingo, hey. Markovsky. If you ever have doubts about whether or not they're hiding the shape of our Earth, <coughs> just car think in about space. the car in space. Yeah. And you're, you're bam, like that. Yeah, that's yeah, a good point. <laughs> Tail gunners. <laughs> what? It's a pilot bar. I heard it was a pilot bar. Yeah, is it? Is it next to the do drop in or the no tell motel? Not quite sure. <laughs> anyway. No, it's next to that. There's a construction bar right next to it. It's called the manhole. Oh yeah, heard. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. heard people talk about that. Yeah. <sighs> I think we've hats. run this show right into the manhole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's auger this baby in. Uh, Raising. Somebody named Sharia Lawson who's trolling me who says she thinks my hat is a joke Scottish hat with built-in hair. Okay, what? Sharia. No. I can, uh, <laughs> let, let me end the show on, on a note. Patricia has the most amazing <laughs> hair of anyone of any age I've ever run into. It is is absolutely real. It's absolutely fantastic, and I hate her for it. Mm. Absolutely. no. Oh. I want to say hello to Alejandro Rubio. I love saying that name. And Glaucoma here as well. Hey. Does he glad work to at have you here. Telemundo? <laughs> exactly. And um, who else is here? A whole bunch of new people uh, have come in. And uh, I think Arwen has. Oh, Bill Keith says Mark's favorite James Bond movie is Man with a Golden Gun because it featured a bar called the Bottoms Up Club. Oh, oh the Bottoms Up. I got to make a joke for that. That's good. Mm. Nice. Um, I know my favorite uh, James Bond movie is Goldeneye. Really? Yeah. Pierce Brosnan. I never no, see that. I'm not a Pierce Brosnan. Lover. I know you're not, but I'm I'm a fan. I thought he should have been. Remember, he he should have done two two earlier movies, but CBS wouldn't let him out of his contract because he was currently doing an American program called Remington Steel. Oh, ick. Didn't like that one either. I know. I didn't like that. It's like, look, let him have his freaking contract. He's James Bond. I, nothing against Timothy Dalton. He's a good actor, but 
I like Sean Connery and I like uh, the current James Bond. And the current James Bond is signed up to do another James Bond movie. Yeah, that's good. They have, no, they have no choice. They have no one to replace him with. And, and then uh, Chris Monksili in the chat said, Moonraker, Dolly's Braces, LOL, with the whole Mandela oh, effect. Oh, the Mandela effect. Yeah. Moonraker, great space reinforcement movie. Yeah. Actually, indeed. that was that was kind of a fun 80s. Yeah. Movie. I don't know what my favorite James Bond movie is, but they did affect me in some way, I think, because when I was young and watched them, I knew that it was, you know, cartoonish and overblown but i just liked i like the glamour and the excitement of the james bond movies and they, the, they weren't violent violent in the way that a lot of movies are now you want to learn a lesson all you young producers in hollywood take it from james Go bond it, finger. <laughs> it, is, it is the it is the quintessential hollywood formula you do not mess with it it's like look if it's not broken don't fix it and th and they didn't. They, they they kept James Bond the way he was, literally from what the 1960 all the way through now. And other series, series is like, no, we got to reboot it. We got to retool it. It's like, no, you don't. I like Daniel Craig. I think he is an excellent James Bond. Yeah. But I like Doctor No from 1962 with Ursula Andress, one of the most beautiful Bond girls ever ever in the white bikini. You know, with a kind of belt on the lower half. Yeah. And Yep, yep, that was one. Yeah, yeah, Sean Connery, of course. So wait a minute, Doctor No wasn't like like the one. That was like one of the first two yeah. or three. I've got all the James Bond DVDs. I've even got all the James Bond books, believe it or not, and I've read all of them. I don't know yeah. if I have a favorite They're Bond girl. Different. So there's and, so many of them because remember, there's two per movie usually. Right, there's right. a villainous, and then there's. They're not as good these days as they used to be in the past. I think that was one of the reasons I picked Goldeneye, though. Was uh, that was F Famke? Famke Janssen. Yeah. She was free. That was before X-Men. She mm. was freaking stellar in that thing. Because she uh, was evil. Martin Lukey says, uh, Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour is also good. Mm -hmm. Seriously, find me a terrible Bond girl. And and I know you're going to say, no, Denise Richards. Like, yeah, okay. She had a terrible name and her character was awful. But <laughs> it's still Denise Richards in the late 90s, early 2000s. So. Uh, somebody named RHUS3371 says Patricia would be a villain. There is a part of me that could be a very, very good villain. And there's it's another amazing. part of me that would be the nice person. Yeah, you say that. The, uh, the <laughs> You guys can look back in f previous shows. Patricia is the quintessential Disney queen. Well, by Disney queen, uh, would that Very be... pretty, very, has the potential for mischief. <laughs> and, you know... The one that gives you the, the, the shiny red apple I with a smile. See, that see. one. Well, I guess that would be the very end of our show, right? right? Is that it? And I didn't even finish my drink. Oh, yeah. So I, I just did. didn't feel like it. I did. Um, thanks to everybody who is uh, in our live chat. Let me go back and see what's going on in there. Why don't you quit drinking, Dad? Because I ain't a quitter. <laughs> And, you know, uh, we've got Flat Earth Freedom with Lisa Je Prefer Platt says, I play a double role. You know, we all do. All of us sometimes are, we, we get angry or we're very loving and happy. You know, that's normal. All of us. We're all the same in that way. You know, we're all, we're all humans here sharing this Flat Earth together. Speak, like it or not. <laughs> speak for yourself. I'm taking my hat off. Making myself comfortable. So you can show off your real hair? No. Sometimes after you wear a hat for a while and this hot light that's on me just makes you hotter. Anyway, we'll talk again next time we do a secret show. Links to most of the stuff we talked about, but not all of us because we do tend to go off on tangents, are in the description box of this very video. And are we going to be doing another secret show before we jet yeah. off? Yeah, we are. We are doing next one Wednesday? more show on the 25th. And then it's up to you if you want to do a show on the first because we're f I'm sorry, on the second. While we're there. While we're there, because we see the we see the movie on the second at two. Uh, it, remember, we may have to do it late from the, the apartment. That sounds good. Let's do it because because you know we get dinner after the thing and oh, that's uh, right. okay so we're gonna have a secret show next Wednesday and then we're gonna have one Wednesday from uh, Toronto right provided we well provided we have service right and that will be when we're able to tell you what happened at the documentary right did so you'll laugh? be able to did tell by our faces yep. I've got like 
streaky mascara from crying you'll know <laughs> although we'll know this actually by uh we'll know this on the first we'll know that on Tuesday. yeah we're gonna do some other updates right from the event too yeah so at that point I either either we do or we do not take carolyn clark hostage right yeah daniel i've got a very mean right hook not well he either. seems pretty wiry no he wouldn't be as they're great you know, people and i think everything's the, gonna be cool I'm pretty sure I can I can pick up chloroform while I'm in Canada. Oh, all right. So, That's good to know. Good you, to know. You, you front the duct tape, though. All right. All right. I'll bring it with me. Cool. Um, that's it for the show. Everyone, be positive. And till we meet again, keep it flat. Hail Hydra, George Clooney. Uh, what else? Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah. Right. <laughs>